Hi there, my name is Elise. I'm from The Quilting Bee, and today I will be showing off one of my favorite sewing machines in the store, the Baby Lux Sashiko. This is unlike anything else that we actually sell in that instead of doing a, a regular stitch, this imitates a running stitch. So it's gonna look hand done. Sashiko is a, a method of hand embroidery, so this will imitate that. To get started, I'm gonna wind us a bobbin so we have some thread to work with. This machine actually doesn't use top thread. It's only gonna run off the bobbin. So I'm gonna take my thread here. Come on, buddy. There we go. I'm gonna go through here, in the guide here. We're gonna thread our thread through the little tiny hole in the bobbin. Gonna trim off the edge of that thread there so that I can actually thread it. Click that into place, engage the bobbin, and we will use our foot pedal. And once I've got that going a little bit, I can trim that thread off so I don't have to hold it the whole time. Most exciting part of the machine. <laughs> I kid. And it will stop when it's done. We'll push the bobbin back over, cut it off, and this is all we need the top thread for. I can just take that off and be totally done with it. The bobbin case on this guy, since it does a totally different stitch, is gonna look a little different than your normal bobbin. It's got two little arms down here and a little fuzzy bit. That is supposed to be there, don't trim it off. <laughs> You're gonna put it in like any other bobbin case here. So we're gonna make a Q up like normal. And then if I am holding this bobbin case with the open side towards my right hand, I'm gonna thread from right to left through the little arms, both of them. and give myself a good amount of extra thread. When I put the bobbin in, it's not gonna go straight up and down. It does actually sit a little bit crooked. There's a little notch in here. I'm not sure if we need to, um, if you can see that or not. But so the notch and the yellow dot is going to line up and it will click into place. And then we're gonna let this move forward. You might see that there's a few things going on here you won't see in your normal machine. You've got a little arm coming out here. You have this arm here that's actually gonna interact with your thread. It's very fun to watch. Once we've got it looped up here, I can just use some tweezers to pull it all the way up and out to the left. Close this, and then we can just cut off the thread, and you actually wanna leave it in that little thread catcher that's gonna hold your end and um, keep it from getting all tangled up at the beginning of your stitch. Now for the fun part, seeing how this thing moves. Since you don't have any um, thread going through your needle to start with, it's actually a combination of a little latch and like a self-threading needle almost. There's a little hole, a little notch in the um, needle itself. And this arm is gonna actually hold that thread when it loops. So we'll put our, put our foot down. That's what that little blinking light is asking of me. And we can go. And right now I've got it 
Um, so it's gonna stop with the needle up. You can stop it with the needle down. And I can toggle that with just this button right here. When I'm done, I will pull to the back. It doesn't pull if you pull to the side or the front. I learned that the hard way. And we're gonna catch it in our thread catcher again. From the front, we have this nice little running stitch. And it does look like a solid line on the back, so not, you know, perfectly like it's hand done, but it does a great job replicating it from the front side there. You can adjust the stitch length and the length in between the stitches with these dials here. So if I want a really short stitch that are really far apart, I'm gonna set the dials as so. And when I sew on it, We've got those tiny little stitches far apart. That'd be great for like a hem or a decorative feature on a jacket or something like that. If we want our stitches to be more visible, I can do the opposite. I can do a really long stitch really close together if we really want that thread to be nice and present. There we have a much longer stitch with a short spacing in between and you can do any combination of them they don't have to match they don't have to it's whatever you like the look of i've sewn in a straight line so far but you can you know make curves make designs they suggest that you lower your presser foot pressure here we're going to turn it to one i believe they want for curves here on just a flat piece of fabric and it's just blinking here to remind me I don't have that foot down quite yet. And now when I sew, it shouldn't be keeping me from turning. And I should be able to get whatever shape that I want. And something like, you know, this would be really cute on your little appliques or anything like that. It's a really nice decorative touch. An alternate to your blanket stitch, I suppose. Something new and different. If you're not working on just flat fabric, you can also quilt with it. That's one of the, one of the big selling points here. We're gonna put even less pressure on our presser foot here with this dial. So I'm gonna turn it all the way up to three. That's as, as soft as it'll go, and it's gonna accommodate our quilt better. And we can get started. For that, I might want my needle to stop down so that I don't lose my place while I'm quilting. So that's all it takes. It'll be either green or orange, depending on if it's gonna stop at the end of a stitch or at the beginning of a stitch, and you can toggle that as well. pivot in this position here with the um, presser foot super high up. I don't need to lift that foot up before I pivot. And let's see if I can get a halfway symmetrical heart here. Ah, symmetry is overrated. I'll advance the stitch here. And the light changed to show that I'm going to be on the other, so now it's going to be at the end of a stitch, not the beginning or vice versa. We have a little heart. We do have a good amount of throat space here, so um, while it's not a long arm, you are going to have a lot of space to put your quilt, roll your quilt up under here. 
Uh, baby quilts are gonna be a breeze, you know, applique all kinds of cute hand done looking things on there. To wrap it up, I just, I'm so happy. Thank you for watching me go over one of my favorite machines. This is such a cool piece of technology. They haven't really done much with sewing machines that doesn't involve a top thread and a bobbin since the chain stitch machines of like the early 1900s. So this is a, a very cool feature. Thanks again for listening to me and feel free to subscribe to us. Give us a like on Facebook and give us a call if you have any questions or are interested in purchasing a Sashiko machine. <laughs>